Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to use a compressor. So compression has been around a long time. Originally it was created for the movies. Because it was the olden days, all the men had deep boomy voices like me. And uh, all the women had uh, very soft voices like this. So they needed a way to even out the volume of the two voices because it was really annoying just turning them up and down. Who wants to do that? You don't want to do that, do you? So in the end, they devised compression, which is basically automated level adjustment. You could think of it as a robotic hand that just turns down the fader every time the sound gets a bit too loud and turns it back up when it's not too loud anymore. Essentially, it evens out the volume of sounds. For this example, I'll show you how to set up a compressor using the stock plugins in Logic, but any compressor has the same basic functions to it and works in the same kind of way, so you can apply this to any compressor that you might use. Okay, so you could probably hear there, there were points where the vocal was kind of getting a bit lost, um, particularly at the end of phrases where it's kind of tailing off a little bit. You can see on the audio there where it's doing that. Um, and certain bits it kind of pokes out and it also feels like it's fighting some of the other instruments. So what we want to do is even that out so it's at a consistent level. So compression isn't the only way of doing this. Um, probably, arguably, the better way is to uh, use automation. This is the volume here, uh, this yellow line. So you can move the volume up and down for certain parts. So if there's a loud part there, uh, you can actually just turn down that little segment and uh, vice versa as it tails off here and gets a bit quieter. You can turn it up like that. Now obviously you do this whilst listening to the audio, I'm, I'm just showing you how to do it. Um, but obviously that takes a long while to do for that entire song. It takes a lot of listening in detail to little segments and making small adjustments and uh, just going incrementally through and it you know, could take hours just to do that on one song. So compressors are a much quicker way of getting that done. Um, Often you would do uh, the automation adjustment and compress it as well, but we're not going to do that. I'm just going to show you how to compress. Let's have a look at the compressor and what the different dials do. So you've got input gain here, which is literally the volume coming into the compressor. Um, most of the time you won't need to touch that. That's just in case you do. Like if the level coming in is really, really loud, so it's going to distort in the compressor or it doesn't give you room to do anything, you can turn it down. And if it's a really, really weak level and you just need to bump it up a bit to give the compressor more of a sort of yardstick to work within, then you can boost it up. But as I say, you don't need to do that most of the time. By the way, a clever trick in Logic uh, and a few other programs actually, um, if you want to get back to zero, you've dialed it in there to 14.5, just hold down Alt and tap it like that and it will snap back to zero so you don't have to spend ages going uh where is zero again it's just there so let's have a look at the controls then so firstly the threshold as i was saying that's the the level at which the compressor starts working so it's listening to the sound and when the sound goes over the threshold then it will start to turn it down everything below that point it just ignores and nothing happens so you want to set the threshold where you want the compressor to start working the ratio is 
you could think of it as the, the strength of the compression that's happening. So if the ratio is set to five to one, which is a sort of medium-ish amount of compression, it means for every five dBs that your sound was going to go over the compression threshold, it will only allow it to go over one dB. So it's literally five to one. It's compressing it five dBs to one. So if it was going to go over by 10 dBs, it would compress it down so it was only 2 dBs over. You see, so whatever it was going to go over the threshold by, it ends up dividing that figure by 5. So the same applies to any compression ratio. So if you went to 1 to 1, which is uh, right at the bottom there, that's actually no compression because for every 1 dB it goes over the threshold it allows it to go over by that db so it doesn't do anything uh two to one obviously it divides that by two so if it was going to go over the threshold by 25 dbs it would only allow it to go over by 12 and a half dbs what i would start off with is probably on a vocal is that somewhere around three and then make up my mind from there where if it needs more or less let's have a look at the the makeup gain here the makeup is another gain stage, like your input gain here, but it happens after you've done the compression, all right? So it's a way of getting your volume back up after you've squashed it down. So you can use that to balance the sound of when the compressor's off and on so that you're hearing the changes in dynamics and not just the changes in volume. This auto gain section I'm going to leave off for the purposes of this tutorial but basically it will do the job of this makeup gain for you. So the knee over here controls the transition between compressing and not compressing. A hard knee there at zero means there's absolutely no transition between it compressing and not compressing so as soon as it goes over that threshold it will start compressing and as soon as it drops under it won't. As you can probably imagine or envisage that's kind of slightly sort of robotic way of doing things. Uh, when it's a soft knee it means that as you're approaching the compression threshold it begins compressing already so that transition from compressing to not compressing isn't just happening the second it crosses that line it's beginning to happen as it approaches the line so there's a there's a transitional period it's called the knee because if we click on here graph you can see this piece here is the knee so that's the transition between compression and not compression this is the threshold here where the knee is so that's a hard knee as soon as the sound passes over that level it's compressed um, and as we go soft you see that line's kind of smoothed out and as we go all the way it's just a gentle slope so really it's hard to see where the compression begins and ends it's kind of sort of always compressing a little bit the attack control allows you to adjust the gap in time between when your sound crosses the threshold, be it hard or soft knee, but when it wants to begin compressing to when it actually does compress. You can use this attack to allow a bit of the, the beginning of your sound to slip through the compressor unchallenged. So the release is the opposite end of that, it's the gap in time after when your sound has dropped below the threshold that the compression behavior stops. So a higher release means that if you go all the way up here to five seconds means that five seconds after your sound has already got quiet enough to not be compressed it's still being compressed a little bit. And the other way if we go to five milliseconds that means very quickly lets go of the compression as soon as it dips below the threshold. So first of all I would leave the threshold at zero that will mean no compression is going to take place and generally what I would do is play through the verse or the section and slowly bring in the threshold down until I'm just getting a little bit of compression and um, so I can begin working with some of the other controls. So let's try that. Right, 
Right, we're getting some compression there now, so I'm just going to adjust this makeup gain to balance out the level to how it was when we started. And I'll turn on and off the plugin to make sure that I've kept the level consistent. I'm happy with that so you can hear that starting to even out the overall sound of the vocal but it's still you can hear the compressor working a little bit and you can kind of hear this kind of gloopy sound if we have a look at this graph here you'll see roughly what the compressor is doing so, we've got so you've got the waveform coming through here the amount of compression there uh, which is also drawing in there how much compression is happening when. Okay, sounds like the vocal isn't loud enough in the mix to me, um, so I'm just going to turn that up. But uh, in terms of compression, that is sounding quite even. So the way I would attack, um, approach the attack and release settings is using my ears. Shock horror. So the release is going to affect the uh, the rhythm really of the sound um, a longer release gives an eff to a point gives an effect of a longer note and a shorter release gives you the effect of a quicker percussive note it's quite subtle let's see if we can hear the difference Could you hear the difference then? Um, when the release is really low, you're kind of you're, you're hearing every single syllable that he's singing as its own individual attack. Da 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 da. It's got that kind of rhythm to it. And then when you push the release all the way up here to to sort of 500 or somewhere like that, the rhythm for the vocal was much more like ba 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 ba. It was only picking up the stronger inflections that he was doing. Have a listen to that again, see if you can see what I mean. We go around here. So you're hearing when he says time to forget when the release is low the compressor has got time to react to, to every single transient that's happening so when it's five milliseconds he's saying time to forget the uh, compressor is able to react to each syllable and recover as in stop reacting to be ready for the next syllable hitting it. So the result of that is you hear each syllable quite cleanly. As you turn the release all the way up, you get the reverse effect where he's still saying time and to forget comes in while the compressor is still reacting to the word time. Um, so it hasn't fully recovered at that point. So it ends up making those sounds less uh, clear. Generally, a shorter release time gives a tighter, quicker, shorter sound, should we say. And a longer release gives a, a longer note. And it will generally make things sound a bit more smooth overall. Obviously, there's no hard and fast answer, unfortunately, for sorting out any vocal because it's totally dependent on the source material and the effect that you want to create in the end so what i would do is just use my ears and let those guide me as to where i think is a good spot knowing in my head that if i want it tighter i can go this way 
and if I want it looser or smoother I can go this way um, so let's try doing that I think I'm liking it there, um, which is what 160. Um, for the moment, that that sounds all right to me. It's not too um, the compressor's recovering enough that you're hearing enough punch from each word, but it's not too kind of bitey and snapping back and forth. It's got got a nice overall smoothness and uh, roundness. Next thing, I would go for the attack, which is uh, the beginning of the note. So that will give you different amounts of uh, presence and brightness and a kind of natural onset of the note so it's set quite high now at the moment relatively high 50 um, generally I will set my attacks quite uh, high that's just how I tend to like things but it totally varies as I say so let's have a listen to a really short attack compared to a long attack see what that sounds like so this is a really short attack zero milliseconds so it's reacting as soon as it passes the threshold, it's immediately turning it down. Okay, now let's compare that to, uh, let's go up to 120. So you can hear there the longer attack made it sound much more open. Um, for me, when when it was right the way up here, that was it was too open. It was to the point where the compression wasn't really working that well because it was leaving such a big gap from the onset of the note, so that your brain really isn't picking up the fact that the note's been compressed. So you need to find that happy medium between uh, where the attack was really short I thought the sound was uh, just a bit curtailed and a bit kind of smothered and the opposite this way so again close your eyes twiddle the dials and find that happy medium let's try it Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. The knee setting, um, again, I would use my ears and adjust that to taste, but I generally find that I'm usually sitting somewhere around the middle third of that, the bell curve type of thing. So let's try that. So I'm liking it around there actually, um, that's where it kind of sounded the smoothest to me and uh, that's what I was trying to achieve with this vocal. Um, there's a few other problems with this vocal that I wouldn't really try and solve with a compressor to be honest, it's, it's quite sibilant etc. So the other control is the uh, ratio which is the severity of the compression. Now to be honest I'm quite happy with 
how much compression is happening now uh, it sounds to me like the vocals pretty smooth um but i'll adjust the ratio a little bit just to give us uh, a bit of an idea of, of where we might want to go with it So I'm actually liking it right about there, 6.6 .6 to 1. It focuses it nicely in the mid-range, kind of pulls it tight in the middle of the sound field and uh, gives it a little bit more sort of oomph and aggression, which kind of works for this style. There's a few areas where it still needs some more compression to bring it out. Um, what I would normally do is I would automate little segments of it as I was saying like generally the these parts the end of phrase where it's kind of tailing off a little bit I would turn those up but I would do that on a plug-in here and uh, I would use the utility section go to the gain plugin and use that automate that up up here so it would be that line just there and uh, I would automate that and make sure that's before the compressor and then you can you can just adjust the vocal and turn it up at those points where it's suffering because I'd say that the compressors it's generally doing the job it just needs a little bit of help in certain areas now you can obviously do that in the compressor and you can make it you know compress much harder to make sure that the, the sound is exactly even throughout the entire song but I wouldn't give that job to one compressor I would try and uh, help it in other ways because compressor can only do so much without starting to make things sound bad so nice little bit of level of automation like that um, will work wonders if you use it sparingly it won't take too much time to do but also you can add other layers of compression um, but there's nothing wrong with compressing it once and then compressing it a second time um, that's totally cool to do um, as always just use your ears hopefully that's given you an idea on how to set up a compressor let me know in the comments about that and uh, like the video if you feel like it and subscribe to the channel if you feel like that as well. And I'll see you in the next video, all right? Bye.